Hello everybody, today we're going to be going over how to use the rank x function within Power BI and on top of that how to use kind of a nice little advanced feature that we can uh, do some ranks within ranks. So how do we rank one level and then on a matrix how do we rank another level under that level, right? So we'll kind of go through how to do multiple of those things um, and how to put that on the page and how to start reporting on that, right? So, all right, let's go ahead and get into it. So let's go ahead and get into a new page. Um, and before we go ahead and do the DAX calculations, let's look at our model first. So what our model is, is a very basic model. We've just got a date table that's connected to our fact table. Um, and then we've got a client, again, connected to fact and placements. So let's imagine we're working at a recruiting firm. Um, you've got a placement, same thing as a sale. Um, right, so just think of it as kind of a placement is a sale, um, and when you make a placement or you make a sale, you get revenue from that at some specific date for a client, right? So very basic model, um, one-way relationships, all active, right? So going back into our table, let's go ahead and throw in our client name and ID and start getting a rank. So first of all, let's go ahead and just show you the sum that we're, or the measure that we're going to be ranking. So we're just going to be ranking the sum of revenue, right? So within our model, within that revenue table, just taking a basic sum of our revenue, of our revenue field. So if we go ahead and throw this client and client name onto the page, what we get is we can see all of the revenue that we have come in for our clients. Let's go ahead and throw in a date slicer on here as well, so we can filter by dates. And so again, you can see that kind of all of our slices are working, all of our stuff is our model is doing what we want it to, right? So what we want to do is we just want to see what these clients, who our top number one client is within any of our filtered for filters, right? So let's go ahead and use um, the rank X function to do this. So what we do with the rank X function, rank X of client, so the rank x function is an iterating function. So what that means is when it's calculating, it's going to calculate every row on the table you provide, right? So every rank, the, every item we provide it within this table, every row is going to be calculating a new rank for that row level item, right? So let's go ahead and calculate, give it the client table, and the expression is the sum of revenue value. We don't need to enter anything in here for order. Let's go ahead with descending so that number one is on top and then ties. Again, you can leave that blank for now. All right, so let's go ahead and then throw this rank of client onto the page. So if we use this rank of client and we just have our table be client, again, the rank X, it's an iterating function. So within our model on the client table, the function is trying to rank every client by itself, right? There's nothing else to rank it against because it's, again, an iterating function. So every row on the client table is being ranked against just itself. So what we can do to fix that is let's just add a simple all selected function on our client table. And now we can see that they get fixed up nice and neatly. And then we'll go through how to clean up these blanks. But now if we filter by the client, we can see that on the top is our one. And if you look at those revenue values, you can see that it does um, sort by highest revenue to lowest, right? So we've got the rank, our top performing client, and the revenue value, and the revenue is sorted top to bottom based on the client ranking. So we can see that just that rank X function, all you needed to do on your table to rank something properly is use that all select statement, right? So now we've got a ranking, very basic, very easy ranking. We can do that, no problem. But if we saw at the beginning, we've got some of this down here, right? What if we want What if we want to report users to be able to filter by the lowest performing clients? We don't want them to have to see all these blank revenues, right? We don't want to have them scroll through that junk. So what we can do is let's go ahead and just include a quick little if statement. So if the measure that we're ranking Let's go is not blank. Let's rank all of them. Otherwise, do nothing. So if the sum of revenue is blank or is not blank, we're going to do our ranking. Otherwise, we'll be blank. So now if we sort by the lowest client rank on top, we can now see that we don't have all of those blanks anymore. So we've, we've excluded that last rank, which is the blanks uh, clients, clients that have no revenue just with that simple if statement. So now they can filter a lot nicer and a, and a lot cleaner. Now let's go ahead and add in the additional complexity of how do we get a separate ranking on client or on placements underneath the client. All right, so if we do this same type of thing, but we switch this up to the placement table, 
So let's go ahead and just use that same function, but use the rank x of placements. And we're going to use that same context. Right, when we put it onto the page, again, it doesn't make sense, right? We're just ranking all the placements against themselves on the client, right? Because we're not, we've got client context on the page, so this doesn't make, or client context on this visual, so this rank X doesn't make sense. However, if it's just the placement ID, we can, the rank X does make sense. That's the correct context for that rank X value, right? So what we can do is we can just add a switch true statement on top of our base statement to just provide those different ranks within themselves, right? So let's go ahead and build on top of this rank of client. Let's go ahead and add a switch true statement. And within this switch true statement, what we're going to be doing is evaluating um, whether or not there is only a single um, or whether or not there's no placement values, right? So if there's a single placement value, we want to show the placement ranking. If there are multiple or no placement values, we want to show only the client ranking. So let's go ahead and do switch true. So what that's going to do is it's going to provide a result based on a value being true. So we're doing switch true and our value that we are going to put in here is the other rank. So let's go switch true. We've got has one value. And the has one value is the placement ID. So on the placement table, we're looking at the placement table has one value. If it does have one value, let's rank the placements. Otherwise, rank clients. All right, so what we're doing here is we are switch true. So we are checking if this expression has one value in the placement ID is true. If has one value within the placement ID is true, then we're going to get this rank. We're going to rank the placements. If has one value is not true, then we'll rank the clients. And if we go ahead and enter on this measure, we can see that all of this stays the same, right? This level stays the same because we're still there are multiple placements within the clients. But then if we open it up and go down to the placement level, we can now see that this client, Davis Limited, the second performing client, we can now see the ranking of each of those placements that we've, they've made as well, right? So now we've grouped in within a single visual, we've got a rank on our clients, and then underneath that, we're also able to rank the specific performance of the client. What is producing that top revenue that made them number two? Was it one single placement? Was it a multiple placements that we're just doing a lot of business with them with? You can do a lot of analysis kind of off of that additional ranking on that simple table. And then again, based on our model, because we've got that date relationship in our date table, we can also filter by dates, just like we were at the beginning. And our measures still work just fine, right? So now Davis Limited has gone from the second to the fifth, and then you can still see those top placements within that selected time frame. Same kind of thing if you want to keep going down, right? You can just drill down into the multiple time frames and still find out what those clients are producing and who's moving up and who's moving down the list, right? So a super quick and nifty little way to kind of use the rank X function so that you can throw on on multiple different ranks within a single visual to provide some additional insights into how your clients are performing and what might be producing those high value uh, clients. Hopefully this works, hopefully this helps. Um, we will go into some more in-depth stuff on how to filter for some top percentages of clients based on all of this in later videos, um, but hopefully this gets you started on using the rank X function and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.